Hello everybody, my name is still Jan Gustafsson and once again, hours after we recorded our weekly Chicken Chest Lab episode, news broke, there's a big article in the Wall Street Journal, I believe chess.com published what, a 77 page report, which I have not read at all about cheating, alleged cheating, email correspondence. Fortunately, we have a man who keeps himself incredibly updated on chess news, on Reddit, on Nakamura stream. Um, Laurent Frassine, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, I actually, yeah, I, I watched Nakamura yesterday. Once again, he was reading loud some, uh, I don't know what he was doing, but uh, th that was fun. And uh, again, this, you know, uh, hey chat, I, I I don't like what I'm seeing. I don't like what I'm seeing. You know, like okay, well, while mentioning that there is no evidence, uh, talking about this uh, cheating case. Um, I mean, cheating case. Uh, these accusations uh, of uh, of cheating, as uh, the world show anyway, even if uh, there is no evidence. And uh, this uh, chess.com uh, report uh, supposedly. Uh, world Championship match prep. Uh, they did World Championship match level prep uh, broke out. So I, I checked. Uh, yeah, I mean I didn't read everything like from from start to finish, but you know there's some some uh, some emails uh, which are catching your attention. Some rating because they published some some people who cheated uh, with the rating, and of course it's mainly uh, Neiman oriented. Uh, saying that he cheated in more than 100 games uh, um, on on chess.com uh, till um, I mean in 2020 and before, so not after. Actually, that you have to that that we, we have to notice as well. To to be fair, uh, but overall, I mean that Neiman cheated more than uh, he admitted that we we basically knew that some. Players, some grandmasters uh, cheated. I think uh, everyone knew that they confessed. That I didn't know, <laughs> and that they would, would publish. Actually, they are publishing uh, emails, but uh, with without the names, um, without the names written, only with the ratings. Uh, which, of course, I'm sure on Reddit they will start uh, uh, guessing uh, who it is. And th there's some uh, twenty six forty Jan. Uh, so you and I, I mean, like I, we, we checked our ratings <laughs> we were, in that we, period. And luckily, we panicked and went back to, when was it, 2020 to, to check what ratings we had? I think it was 2643. Yeah. It's 2640 exactly. Yeah, like, yeah I, I checked it and I was 2633, 35, 38. And I was 2640, but in May 2019, as... Our friend Peter uh, reminded me. Thank you, th thank you, Peter. And I didn't play on chess.com uh, in 2020. Anyway. But let's go through <laughs> what we know at this point. We know you were 2640 at one point. We know you were on the 2010 <laughs> Olympic team. We on know you were on the Norway Gnomes, where Hans allegedly cheated while yeah. playing for them. And we know that Hans's defense is mainly that he played, or the people defending him is mainly. <laughs> You, Jules Moussa, and Maxime saying, no, no, he's a good blitz player, or there's a match against Maxime. Is that, is that correct, Mr. Fresine? I'm not really defending him, if you would listen to, to me. <laughs> I know, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> stating the case for the prosecution. Because I, I mentioned some of his games uh, over the board uh, when he got this Grandmaster title, which are uh, very, very high quality for... Uh, a candidate grandmaster, I would say, um, or even for a top player, actually. So, uh, yeah, I, I was not teammate in the Norway norms, as far as I know, even if I was not uh, too focused on who was playing. I played very few games on the request of my Norwegians' uh, brothers. <laughs> they know uh, you well. Back in the days. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's it. But in in Kantiman I was there, yeah, with, with Fela. Peter, please. Yeah, uh, I also read the report, uh, unlike you. Well, I didn't see Nakamura's stream, I, but I actually read the report. I even, uh, I cut uh, this morning's golf round to, to nine holes in order to go back and prepare for this postcard, actually. So I have written, uh, read it. Um, 
there's a lot of things that uh, saddens me a bit in the report, especially, well, 25 grandmasters has confessed to, to cheating. Well, that's a high number, in my, my opinion. It shows that there is a considerable problem, uh, as I see it. Um, another thing that I thought was, um, well, interesting or noteworthy is that Chess.com is saying that, I mean, numerous top players participating in their events has privately uh, expressed concerns about Hans playing their events. Uh, that was one thing. They're talking about well, growing suspicion amongst chess players. And uh, I mean, well, that is quite something. And they are also mentioning that there was growing suspicion in the community about his uh, uh, over-the-board performance. So, I mean, well, there seems to be quite some rumors out there. And I assume that these rumors, uh, at least, well, at least those concerning online is pre the Sinkfield uh, accident and pre that they, well, they are saying that they uh, didn't invite uh, Hans for this uh, their global championship based on several things like this, and they wanted to handle it in a private manner, but that Hans was not invited due to these rumors and these suspicions. You, you so, know, he was un- uh, uninvited. Maybe he I was even on, on, on it. Maybe you're right. He might. He was uninvited. uninvited and he got he got 5K. Actually, for not playing a game, they, they were compensating him. So, I mean, it was not that uh, that clear. Mm-hmm. Then they say uh, about the get. G- I mean, in general, the game with Magnus, but also sorry, specifically the game with Magnus, but also in general, that there is no direct uh, evidence of uh, of that. But they have, s- s- I mean, several reasons to be suspicious, and I'm, I'm mentioning that. Then they talk about. Um, some of the, let's say, not rumors, well, I don't know, you will maybe say, well, you see a lot of these videos with uh, statistical evidence, or well, evidence in brackets. And they're saying, for instance, that the, the number of, let's say, perfect games where he has a very high score is not exceptional for him. That is, uh, well, you can compare with other players and uh, they seem to have uh, the same number or some even has a higher number of that. So, well, they're doing a lot of things, but also, again, uh, I have only read it uh, once. It's a it's a serious document, and there's a long appendix. I haven't been through yet, but um, well, there is obviously a lot of um, information, and uh, at least how I read it is that whatever point of view you have, you can find uh, things in there to sort of strengthen your views with. So it's very unconclusive in that say, and that probably sort of uh, capsules very well how the the general situation is, as I see. Yeah, but I, 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 unconclusive. I would disagree. First of all, I, 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 I would like to mention that the rumors about Niemann didn't, re- didn't reach uh, fans uh, actually since uh, since uh, three weeks ago. I mean, I, I didn't know at all that he was suspected, or uh, I mean, like I, I, I didn't care and I didn't hear about it. Uh, very unconclusive. I, I, I would, I would kind of disagree. Um, because okay, my uh, actually my conclusion after uh, reading that is that okay, he cheated online quite a bunch. Uh, uh, that's for sure. Over the board, uh, there is no evidence, but of course, his 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 habit, I would say, of cheating online makes him uh, very suspect. But uh, well, there is no evidence, so we cannot. Uh, uh, we cannot make conclusion, and we will probably actually uh, never know. So this is how I hate the, the, the report. Um, but in that sense, so, there's yeah, not there's not that much new information. No, like <laughs> we knew he cheated. Okay, once whenever he said when he was twelve or whenever it was, and then I never read it as he said that he cheated in two games. But this twice, the second time, it sounded like he cheated over a period of time to improve his results. No, wasn't that this touching story how he was living alone and had to pay pay the rent uh, and all that stuff so i'm what what new stuff did we learn as i said i didn't i didn't read it it's that he also cheated in money tournaments that's that's sort of new yeah and in league games so what's the new information there huh. yeah i don't uh yeah no no there's no like no, yeah, maybe also. She did more than, than what he admitted. I mean, that's and uh, well, uh, yes. more recently, I mean, if Hans mentioned sixteen, then the chess.com is saying he was already seventeen when he likely cheated in some of these matches and games. Well, actually, it was two thousand. And also that but... he was streaming in twenty-five of the games, which he also earlier said. So, I mean, some contradictions that definitely is uh, between what he has said and that they are pointing out yeah. in specifics. 
Actually, he can. He can. He's born in two thousand and three. I just. I'm just checking now. Twenty of June. So if he started at the start of two thousand twenty, and get caught at that time, I mean, he was basically sixteen. Uh, actually, he should have said sixteen till seventeen. Uh, yeah, but that's uh, forgivable. Um, detail. Uh, maybe. So actually, maybe maybe he just. Uh, so only only two twice was a bit, uh, of course, an understatement because uh, there is many, they are showing many matches and many many tournaments. But actually, I mean, the the the, the fact about age was maybe correct. So maybe it was when he may, when he said twice, it was like two periods. I mean, he said. But it, that's what it, I mean. Not course, the second time. He always it. said he was he did it to grow his rating and to grow his stream. I never thought it meant one one game. I thought it meant. In era in mm-hmm. in his life, but okay, yep. that's yeah, semantics, I guess. Other than that, it becomes semantics. I would say, yeah. How about Fella? How many how many times did he cheat? Right. I mean, it's, uh... it's ten games at the Olympia, this Paris tournament, this Barcelona tournament. It's like thirty. We know of mm-hmm. no, like, more or less. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, yeah I, I mean, like I didn't know it actually before Olympia, but then Jan uh, Jan told me like after. Uh, that you are suspecting. I mean, like the Germans, uh, they saw him in Bill and uh, they were suspecting him before he got caught in uh, in Cantimansis, which I didn't hear about. I mean, like, very, 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 very honest again. Oh. I mean, like, maybe some people, <laughs> they, start, they will start not believing me like like Peter Heiner, but uh, um, yeah, I, I, I didn't no, know. No, with Laurent, of course, the question is, with Han, like, no. how many teams with cheaters can you be on without without knowing, like... I mean, once we understand, but repeatedly at some point we have to start applying these Magnus standards. I'm just, I'm just very lucky. <laughs> what can I do? Oh, maybe they the cheaters target your team. Yeah, they simply think that. Yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> like no, you know. no. I mean, but uh, it's an interesting report. Again, I haven't read it fully, but sort of breaking news. It's difficult to see. Yeah, the, no. Like, I mean, oh no, so, so, well, that was, they made really a low and strength uh, yeah. statement of the statement, and the statement is very disappointing. Well, I mean, that's somewhat unrelated to this case, but maybe not uh, as well. I mean, still the 25 players has actually been caught, or rather you could say confessed, is still quite a big number to me. It's, uh, I mean, that is something. And also that, I, I mean, I'm not sure it's in the report, but someone mentioned that there are, well, it was at least some from the top hundred as well, right? Four, I mean, four. four. That yeah. was that had been public. Four, four yeah. from the top hundred. So I mean, well, you cannot say that it's not a problem if actually four players of the top hundred has been taken. Uh, in no, that. I, I, and actually, I mean, what I mean, like I, I because I told you before the show that four out of top hundred. I mean, I thought that was really the minimum, and uh, but I mean, it's four people who confessed, so uh, yeah. it's not pe- four people who got caught. I mean, probably there's some. Uh, people who cheated and didn't get uh, caught. Some people who cheated got caught, but they didn't uh, confess because I mean to confess and that to 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 have a male like this who can be I mean like I don't know these guys are just uh, I mean that's very confusing to me. What's the deal in in general with Chess.com? If they if you're caught cheating, then they contact you and they say. If you confess, you can have a new account and you can keep playing. And we will keep the matter private. Is that is that the offer? Like, yeah, you, you're trying to so. trick Laurent here. Yeah, I mean, I, I would. I, I mean, from the mails, from the mails, you can read on the, the report. It's what uh, it's apparently what they say. But okay, and is there, is there some fine print yeah, no. like that? We will keep it private <laughs> until it's public interest, in which case it's no longer private. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, like, I mean, these guys are not only cheaters, but. Uh, the, uh, Guys who got caught, but uh, I mean, like, you don't have to be very bright. I mean, to, uh, I mean, you just, I mean, why, why you you go, you want you want to play again on that website? I mean, like, there's many websites. What 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 do they want to do to to come back? I mean, this guy, so some people who are twenty five hundred. So what do they expect to make any kind of money uh, out of this online tournament? I mean, why they want their account? But for back? many people, I mean, there. Like, their livelihood might be connected to no. Their students might be on Chesscom. Mm. They give lessons there. Like uh, I don't know. I would guess. Could yeah, be but then why? Yeah, but if you give lessons, then don't, don't cheat, please. I mean, like I uh, think don't cheat is sound I, advice. I, I, in general. Yeah, it's a good legal, good legal advice. Yeah. 
No, I mean like don't shit, and especially if you are giving uh, lessons. I mean like, <laughs> but, I mean for your reputation, it's not. Especially if it's your job, let's say. If it's uh, just a hobby, okay, it's not good. I, I fully understand. But if it's your job, it becomes really. Uh, no, but it goes both ways. Here, maybe you can charge higher rates, or you get more attention if you have high online ratings. Uh, I don't know how stuff works, but I'm sure people have really, their, yeah. their motivations. With of course, we don't. Yeah, I think it's only it. pride, you know, and fake pride, actually. I mean, like, I don't, ah, okay. This should be punished, and I am happy that, uh, actually, uh, Chess.com is uh, just fooling them big time by saying it will be anonymous, don't worry, confess. Uh, it's only between you and me, and, okay, then they confess, and then they, 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 they fool them. You I don't mean, think, think there's anything the wrong about that practice, you think, once once someone cheated or they suspect no, because cheating she, for a game? I mean, like, if the guy is admitting, no, I don't think there is anything. Wrong. I mean, you have to catch the guy at any cost. And uh, once he cheated, and but what if? Why, why not? I'm not that? sure this is a realistic scenario. But let's say I didn't cheat, but I really need my account for whatever, for coaching, or because I, I want it back. And so they say, okay, if you admit to cheating, we keep it private. You get your account back. Then you say, okay, that's the that's a better way for me. It's too unlikely a scenario. I mean, yeah, it's so unlikely, yeah. Well, that was also, I mean, is this different? I basically agree with Jan that it's a dilemma that uh, by confessing, you, you actually might get your account back and get some privileges. This obviously gives you a reason to confess, and for some, it could be a tempting way to get the account back if you need it in a hurry. Also, if we go back to the Feller case, uh, as far as I remember, there was debate if the evidence was obtained legally. And that's also a problematic. Yeah. Not, I mean, well, I remember many in the Feller case said that, well, that was good because then we proved it. But, well, getting illegally obtained evidence is also a problem. But, okay, we are getting far away from the report and back to our old... Uh, no, actually, I mean, like, it's there's some kind of, uh, let's say, uh, same 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 point that as Maxim Vashilagrav uh, gave his uh, private uh, chat with uh, Arnaud Shah to the... Um, to the French Federation and the Feder French Federation asked if they could use it in the card mm -hmm. and they couldn't actually. I mean, like okay. it was, uh, it was a decline. I mean, the judge still saw it, uh, but he couldn't, he cannot use it because it's still, I mean, the, the appeal is still on actually. I mean, it will be, just, I, I don't know where, where it will be, but soon, <laughs> I mean, 12 years later, the, the case yeah. is still going on. So, um, yeah, it's not clear, uh, if you can, uh, I present this evidence, but I don't know. I mean, U.S. law are, are probably. Uh, but for instance, you are arguing that it's good things are public. So, do you think yeah. the, the chess world has a right to know which four top hundreds players has actually cheated? Yeah. Okay. If they, they confess, yeah, they, they should they should give the name, yeah, please. But I'm sure people have the detective skills to run the ratings and no, the but emails. I mean, like, if you, if you want this. If you want this world circus to stop, I mean, you have to shame. I mean, I'm sorry, but you have to shame people. And then, uh, okay, the guy, the kid will be 16 in his room and uh, 16 years old in his room and will think about cheating. Then he will see uh, what can happen. Uh, I mean, what what else can you do? I mean, you have, you have to you have to be severe. I mean, like, uh, there's no other way around than to, to punish people. That's um, unfortunate, but... I mean, if you have better uh, better um, solution to to stop the cheating online, please uh, tell me. Go ahead. We're getting into big questions here. If the nature of people yeah. and in order to, for them to behave ethically, we need more severe punishments and so on and so forth. But yeah, obviously, it's a thing that's that exists out there. How we play out, hard to judge. But I always knew it was it was wrong to cheat, even without the big punishments, no? Because I'm I'm so morally grounded. <laughs> 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 no, but I, I'm half serious, no? Like I mean, it's uh, you kind of know you're not supposed to do it, no? Uh -huh. Of yeah. course, but you saw in cycling that if it becomes this thing that. Uh, you know, everybody will start cheating if it goes uh, unpunished and you start uh, getting a competitive disadvantage, right? So, I mean, I, I mean, you know, well, we shouldn't end up there. I think we are very far from that. But um, 
I mean, well, it's it's things to to, to discuss. Yeah. No, it, it reminds me what one of the cyclists who was caught, uh, Richard Virenc, and he said, "I'm not going to to cheat again," and so on and so and so forth. And one journalist came to him and says, "Like, okay, uh, so I give you the option to you can cheat again. You are hundred percent sure that you won't be caught, and you are hundred percent sure that you will win the Tour de France. Uh, are you going to do it?" And he thought for five seconds, and I like his answer. He said, "Yes, sure." <laughs> <laughs> and just five minutes before, he was saying, "Like I will never do it again." Yeah. So you see, I mean, like uh, this is a human. I mean, who can? I mean, like, and you see that, and you think, "Ah, oh, okay." I mean, uh, yeah, okay. It's his dream to win the Tour de France. I mean, like, okay, he's not such a bad guy. Uh, so yeah, no, it's uh, when you when you catch people, you should. Because it's how it works. I mean, I don't see, I don't see what 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 would you do, Jan? I mean, like I give you the, you can shit. You are sure not to be caught, and and you are sure to become the next world champion. I mean, do you do it? No. But but the problem. <laughs> no, okay, good. <laughs> good. But the problem is also that I mean, chess.com is obviously asking for confessions for a reason because well, what they have, I don't know if that constitutes legal evidence. I mean. Uh, I don't know how it will work in a court case. It works within that they can, you know, ban them from their server based on their rules, right? They have the right to do so. But how we deal with that in the chess world? I mean, well, these guys are only cheaters because they have confessed in, in the eyes of the chess world, uh, I would say, right? I mean, well, it, it raises some difficult problems. Also, to my mind, they agreed I to uh, what I was consider is a private deal. Like, you confess to cheating, we give you an account, and we shut up about it. And now to use that for... Mm. I don't know. Law, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Wants to ban people from FIDE tournaments. I think we're on very, very shaky ground. So also uh, morally, not just uh, legally, but of course, there's two no, sides. It's, it's very, yeah. very, very com com complicated in a lot of directions. But it's, of course, also very unsatisfactory if, uh, you know, nothing is happening. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I prefer... No, I'm not happy with that. But, I mean, like, uh, of the two, I prefer uh, that something happens. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. Uh, and also not 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 to punish people, but for the future to give a warning, to to give a warning to future uh, potential because uh, that's not going to stop those future potential people will be tempted to cheat, and that will be uh, uh, a lot because computers are so strong, and we are living in this. In this would you be you willing to serve on the feed of fair play committee? Wow. I mean, like, if it's well paid, yes. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> you know me, <laughs> so you have to insert a coin, and then I can I can walk. But if, if you don't insert a coin, I am not. So yeah, I don't like it. I mean, uh, so uh, yeah, and so you have you have to you have to prevent, especially in this. You know, it's so easy now that you are at home, you are checking some position, and you are. You have, you have the best move immediately when you are, yeah, let's say, checking some some you're doing some opening work. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, like uh, the the incentive to 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 cheat online is so is so big that you are, we have to do something, and I don't see any other way actually. Actually, mm. um, I don't like it, but I don't see any other way. But now that all this stuff is no. public, what's uh, what's your solution then? We we keep telling court cheaters, okay, confess, and we won't. Uh, then we will publish it, or like, uh, what do you want to do? As that's the weakness of uh, what they did now, because they cannot, I mean, they should have published this uh, in 10 years. <laughs> I don't know. No, but they did it now. And uh, maybe you think they can still have confession after that? Like uh, they can still... That's what, what I'm people? asking. What's, what's the <laughs> way forward here? But, <laughs> maybe. That would be funny. That's some, uh, that some another, that few, few people would confess after that. Uh, and... I mean, like Danny Ainge coming up with this. That way, it will be private. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't no, know. No, I, I'm not um, answering any Danny Ainge uh, messages without my lawyer anymore. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. No. Uh, I mean, th th it's what they will do. Yeah. Uh, and what? What? What's uh, what's the problem? They, they won't have any confessions anymore. That's it. That's pity. Yeah. So to sum up, what, what have we learned? We learned, okay, somewhat more cases of online cheating by Hans, although we could argue if these more cases were still the area he referred to when he said he was 16. 
In the -the over-the-board cases, nothing new, like everyone has their suspicions, but we didn't get any, their algorithm wasn't used for over-the-board or wasn't applicable, so there we don't, we don't know that much new. We know of a bunch of grandmasters that have confessed to cheating and probably with some detective works, we can even find out the the names also by the emails leaked, but the names haven't been published yet other than Hans and Delugi. That's that's the status, right? Yeah. No, I don't know what's the status on Reddit, but uh, that's the status on uh, chess.com article. What's the... For me, it's like, well, I was confused before. I'm still confused now, but maybe on a higher level, I would say. So there is a lot of details and info, but uh, it's still, uh, yeah, still a a mess. What's the status on Hikaru's chat, Laurent? It's it's very (laughs) sus chat. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very sus. It's very sus chat. I don't like. I don't like what I'm seeing. I don't like what I'm seeing. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he doesn't like what he's seeing. Uh, well, I mean, like <laughs> he's trying to not accuse anyone, but of course, he's implying, uh, he's inducing a lot of uh, things. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, like it's uh, yeah, we were all very confused. Of course, uh, some of. Over the board, uh, 2020 uh, games uh, were very, very impressive. So this adds to 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 confusion. I mean, like Chess.com seems to say that uh, there's no reason to to think that uh, or no evidence to think that uh, Neiman cheated against Magnus uh, in single field. So they also say they also mention that Magnus didn't. Uh, didn't put any pressure on them to publish or didn't ask anything or was not in touch uh, with their team. Or I mean, like, yeah, he, I mean, the usual. Um, uh, I mean, Mag- Mag- Magnus is fair on that. I mean, we cannot. I mean, before the sinker field, um, he, he, he could he could kick out Neiman, I, I guess. I mean, if he just says two days before the tournament, uh, I'm the world champion, it's me or Neiman. I mean, he has the power. Yeah, he had the power to do it, uh, but he didn't do it, and that's uh, that's good, I think. Uh, okay, uh, not <laughs> after what happened. Maybe, maybe that would have been a simpler solution. But so, so I mean, that's good. That he's not. I'm sure you're right there. I mean, that they actually would kick out a player. It's also not how <laughs> Magnus operates, no. Like, but that's. <laughs> Yeah, it's not how he operates, yeah. So that's uh, there was one chess detail in the report. Actually, they mentioned in the game. Uh, Magnus against Niemann that Niemann in the interview was mentioning Queen H4 that I didn't pay attention to and they basically said that that's well he was blundering a, an easy tactic so it's like I think it's Bishop E6 the move must be Queen H4 HD5 Knight D5 and uh, the attack is not winning and he was asking the interview for the engine to be put on and that's basically a sign of well they say that well they are basically giving the impression that's an easy tactic I have to admit, I I missed. Well, I was having the exact same thoughts during the game. But uh, no, but that's uh, that's a problem when people when uh, people not uh, now now we can see that they are not that good at chess. Uh, <laughs> because I mean, you I'm surprised because it was his prep. I mean, he knew the moves. He knew that rook fd one bishop e six was there, and that's it. I mean, like okay, and then you start thinking over the board uh, why the computer is not showing uh, queen h four or something, and then you know it's bad. But you just this happened to me a million times during the games that I know the, the I know I know what is a good move and I know the evaluation. But uh ah, what about this Queen H4? Ah uh, so I know it's not good, but uh well over the board I cannot find the refutation. So and the guy doesn't play it at the end of the day. And then after the game I go and check why it was not good because uh, when I was checking with the machine, I was not thinking with my brain. I was just hitting I, I had lines. a my extreme example was playing Bundesliga against Nübeck. We played some weird line in the Grünfeld, I think actually prepared together with uh, Gusti back in the days. And he played a move that wasn't in my prep. And uh, I thought for more than 90 minutes and at some point, I thought it was more important that I made a move and didn't lose some time than actually try to figure out what it was that I was missing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, it's I get normal, it. yeah. It's extremely There was normal. a bishop at four night G2 days here? Like, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, probably it was an F3, right? You want to? I mean, we jumped to G5 the night. Ah, yeah, support is some complete 
absurd absurdity. There is also some Schmilita Lachno games yeah. in that line uh, and oh. things like this. So, who leaked, who leaked to, to, to Schmilita? I think Schmilita leaked to us, no? There were some Schmilita files back then. Uh. It could, it could actually <laughs> be that uh, yeah, the, the upcoming husband of Schmilita made some files and then shared them with you later. Yeah. Anyway. Um, that, uh, anyway, yeah. I didn't get again. What, we are blab- blabbering, not too much. I didn't news, get right? what Laurent's point was, no. but I didn't see anything too suspicious in the Queen H4 either. It could also be that uh, you check Queen H4 in some similar position. Queen H4 was there, and like, yeah, I thought, I thought there was nothing too weird about it. But uh. no, no, but it's, uh, no. You could, of course, it's, just uh, being devil's advocate, advocate here. If you you could zoom out and say, okay, there's this kid who cheated online many times, then he improved faster than everybody else. Then he played the world champion for the first time in his life with black and he plays perfectly in the opening and he wins. Like, what do we say? Because sometimes we could be too close to the topic and say, but okay, it's normal. He knows the opening, it's transposing to Catalan and yeah, the the moves aren't so hard. So that's that's why why people are so fascinated with it as well. Yeah, like maybe we're the idiots here. (laughs) Like it's hard to say. I mean, like, I think, I think, I mean, most of the audience, a chat, a chat, uh, I think chat, uh, I, I, I could read the chat uh, on Naka streams. I mean, they are, they are just completely sure uh, that uh, that uh, Niemann cheated in that in that game, even against Magnus. I mean, like, they are completely sure because, yeah, if you think out of the box, he knew the opening, which Magnus never played, uh, and so on and so on. So, uh, I mean, you you can. And he cheated online, and uh, yeah, uh, he has a shady uh, reputation, obviously, uh, because of that. So yeah, from outside, if you are not um, an expert, I mean, it's pretty clear that Hans cheated in that game. I I remember having the discussion, well, not discussion, but it was a joke with with Vichy maybe 15 years ago. There was some some player who maybe he even had his grandmaster title revoked. But uh, just to explain, I mean, well, there was a lot of talk about him at the time. And I think someone made the case that, okay, he had this rook ending and he didn't even know how to draw with the fillet opposition or something like that. And, well, I think our joke was that, well, in the court case, I mean, for the chess world, it's kind of obvious, but I don't know how it works in the court case to say, okay, he doesn't even know the fillet but a position. I mean, I guess oh. a judge would look with you sort of kind of bewildered, right? I mean, <laughs> we are making a lot of chessy assumptions that I don't know how they work at all legally. It's It's very, very difficult. No, they don't work legally, and uh, and uh, but they work for yeah, uh, and they don't I work for a larger, for a broader audience. But yeah, we yeah. know it's true. I mean, like if you don't know the field or position, you position, cannot be done. Uh, I or I know. Well, like, there was also Lucena, some I'm not taking a lie detector test right now. No, and then <laughs> I forgot what was the recent one with the the two the two flank Vancouver, right? Ah, come I mean, on, that's way too tough. Uh, you know. <clears throat> Vancouver, I have to play it over the board tomorrow. I'm not matching. <clears throat> I yeah. think I could give you a five-minute course. No, I've had yeah. I've had many five-minute courses. Yeah, that's saying, yeah. I would miss that. Over the world. That is true. I actually with Magnus and Rapid in, in, uh, in Brazil. I think Brazil uh, eight nine years ago. We had uh, he got uh, Rook H and F against Rook against me, and I was extremely proud that I showed that I knew how to draw it. So I showed my chess culture. But of but course, I lost it. the game later because when it came. Yeah, yeah, when it comes to realization phase, I had to take a pawn. I mean, no one is capable of what well, someone is, but I'm not. But at least I showed off that I knew how to put the rook. Nice. You put the rook on A1 cleanly, and then you lost it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're sure to make a draw in Vancouver against Magnus? Uh, no, I'm not. But I okay. think it's it's easier yeah. practically. I think also, well, I actually went to Moscow uh, to study with uh, Drowetsky back then. Yeah. And I think basically the point is Vancouver. If you know it, it's very simple. Rook, H, and F. I mean, there comes yeah. some tricky phase. Vancouver, yeah. that's I actually not really a tricky phase. Uh, if you get the concept, it's basically you stare at the pawn from one side. When it goes too far, you stare from the other side. That's it. Okay. Um, but anyway, just just for the listeners, uh, we that's recorded yeah. three more hours on the Vancouver position, but we decided to cut it because it was <laughs> way over your heads. Thank you so much for listening to this little update. I think we will put Thank it you. in front of the regular episode. So what you will listen to next is what we recorded before we learned about the Chesscom report. You lost me already. Yes. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Let's get into some topics. Yeah. Chess cheating. What's what's so going what's on? going on? Is Hans guilty? Did, did someone catch so him? So Fide Fide appoint, appointed a commission with three um, 
uh, <laughs> experts. <laughs> or, I don't know, three people. Uh, yeah, so to to judge, I mean, like to judge. Yeah, I, I know you have to have something to say, Peter. Um, no, I'm just. I mean, you were the one mentioning FIDE first on this podcast. I want to point out that's a yeah, new that's true. That's true. Go on. But uh, yeah, so three people who will um, study uh, the case of uh, Hans Niemann and uh, also uh, Magnus Carlsen, who uh, clearly um, actually he only accused him of cheating more recently. That's the only accusation he made with his uh, very well written uh, letter. Uh, so. Um, um, yeah, they, they will study their case. So I, I don't know, maybe you guys uh, want to add something, but I, I think for, for Magnus, they cannot do anything because uh, he just says that he was cheating more. And chess.com, in the meantime, said that they have some more... Uh, they, they will. Uh, they, they made a statement announcing a new statement. So this is uh, the law and stance thing, apparently. Um, so overall, I, I don't think Magnus is risking much because uh, it's clear that uh, Hans... Uh, cheated more recently online, uh, at the very least. Uh, but hence, uh, admitting that he was cheating, um, uh, like he, he did admit by uh, he wrote to chess.com, he also said it uh, on one interview. I think he, he will get a ban because, uh, well, this is not uh, this is not how chess uh, should work, like a, bi a bit like Kayakin who said some. You know, like so, some terrible things, and then add this six months ban. I'm expecting Niman to get a, a six months ban because. But hang on, this is confusing stuff you're saying. So you're saying Hans Kozi admitted online yeah. cheating to Chesscom will get a six month ban from. Yeah, because it's bad. It's bad. It's, ba it's bad publicity for chess or what, whatever the bad ethic. And the hundred other grandmasters that also privately admitted online cheating to Chesscom. I, I, I think so. I think uh, if it will be public. Like this druggy, uh, this. But who decides what to make it public? Chesscom decides which case to make public, and then they get banned by FIDE. And if Chesscom gets, I, I understand it's not uh, it's not ideal, but uh, that's how it will work. It sounds very far from ideal. Yeah, but okay, if if you can catch some cheaters and ban them, I mean, for some time, I think it's good. So uh, it's not because you. How do you do it if you? If you got caught at any moment, you should get banned. No, no, no. I think I think if you admit it, it, then then the end is good. I mean, and if it's public, so you shouldn't admit and it. Why, why? I mean, this uh, this druggy stuff was was uh, public. That uh, I don't know, uh, but it became public, and I, I think they will get uh, people who are admitting cheating. Uh, it will be a new a new thing, but why not? I mean, actually, it's for. I mean, you, you are not following the, 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 the ethic. I mean, like, okay, you shouldn't cheat, simply. So it's bad for the game. So, so, so they will get some ban. I'm not saying it's right, but I'm saying that it, that will happen. Uh, so that's my guess. No, I disagree with all of it, but maybe let's first um, yeah, okay. pay, catch up listeners with what happened. So we know that Magnus mentioned Zlugi's name in one of the interviews during the Champions Chester event, which he won, where he said, yeah, Hans is doing great, and his coach, Maxim Dlugi, has done great work. Like, I think we knew, or I had ru heard rumors at, le at least, that there was some cheating allegations with Dlugi online. And then, I think at some point during last week, but we hadn't talked about it yet, this Vice magazine published a long article, that was very funny, actually, where they had the email exchanges between chess.com and Dlugi, which I think chess.com provided to Vice or Motherboard, their, <clears throat> their online magazine, because of the public interest. That's what they said. And of course, it leads to some questions like, which cheaters are public interest? Is it the ones Magnus mentions and so on? But yeah, to read these emails was, was <laughs> fascinating. Like Dlugi. Dlugi is first said he was playing some Online events, I think, titled Tuesday or whatever, in front of his students and his students from 1500 till 1900, they were, they were saying move, move suggestions, and he picked them up happily. And later, it turned out one of the students was on his phone. Like that was. But the actually, I mean, they, they like they imply that one of the, I mean, the student was giving the moves. I mean, they, they don't want to say his name because he's publicly uh, well known. So I mean, it's clear that it's. I mean, they're referring to Hans. I mean, uh, that's uh, pretty obvious from the article. So, but 
What? It's 1500 till 1900? No, no, no. No, no. To, 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 they, are, they are referring to one student and it's pretty clear it's hands. <laughs> it wasn't clear to me. It wasn't clear yeah, but okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. like, okay. I, 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 I will find the, the quote and I will, I will show you and you will, uh, you, you will get it. But uh, yeah, that was... We, we, no, I think no you, you didn't... I mean, we didn't learn much from this article. It was pure uh, entertainment. I mean, except that uh, uh, Druggy was cheating online. I mean... No, of course, it has some serious implications if Chesscom can decide which, because I know these correspondence, or I assume, I should be careful, I assume these correspondence exist with other people as well. So who's the arbiter on which ones are in the public interest and which ones aren't? I'm assuming, for example, if such were to exist with Hans, there would be some public interest as well. But uh, it's it's a tricky subject, no, Peter? Like, where do you stand on? Yeah, I agree. It's, it's complicated. Um well, I thought generally it would be illegal to leak uh, emails like this, but perhaps, I mean, when you are part of an email correspondence, maybe it's not. Maybe that it depends on if you have given a promise to not to, in a way. Again, well, for instance, I would expect that if I had sort of, um, if I had uh, communication with uh, a company or a chess federation, that they should keep it confidential while I have the right not to because I'm the, the smaller <laughs> smaller part. I, I'm, I'm being serious here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, but it's still funny. <laughs> yeah, okay. Assuming you had communications with the chess federation, yeah. they should be quiet when you have the right. Generally no, speaking, but it's, uh, yes. But I mean, no, that was uh, a bit uh, surprising uh, to me. Well, if we talk about the thing with the um, committee uh, of FIDE that uh, Lorang is mentioning, well, I don't think they have the right to give out bans. I mean, they are investigating. Then they can choose ah. to take it to the FIDE Ethics Commission or others can as well. So it's going to be a process to, to that extent. Also, well, I don't know which kind of tools this um, co committee has to has to do. Maybe they have to call in some experts and such. And uh, I, I, I don't know. Well, when Laurent talks about that, it's hard to see Magnus uh, getting any kind of sentence. Well, they did sentence uh, Shukova some years back, and she got a three-month ban. But of course, she had been more explicit exactly. in her accusation, as you were saying with Magnus. But well, again, you can say that Magnus says something, and then the some the rest of the world start uh, talking about it. So I don't know. I mean, uh, well, I'm not a lawyer, but it's uh, there is a lot of um, you know interesting and complicated. Uh, also, it doesn't have to be about the words, no? Like you did uh, resign a game after after one move, which you could phrase as unsportsmanlike behavior. He withdrew from a tournament and so on. Like, obviously, he's he's doing it with, with some intent, but... Well, another thing is, well, Laurent says that we should uh, ban people who has been cheating on chess.com. You can also say Magnus now resigned a game in an online tournament, but these are not Events under any kind of jurisdiction of uh, feed. So, so, so you have to you have to uh, play. I mean, like uh, Kin was banned not because of bad behavior on on the chessboard. But that's different. That's different. He made statement. I mean, I think on the fifth of March, if I remember correctly, Fida had some statement that you could not talk positively for the war, and we have a general rule about that you cannot bring the game into distribute. Um, yeah, in exactly. Also, so, uh, Iman admitted cheating. No, but yeah, but pay attention. Um, Kayakin was sentenced and banned, Shipov was not. It was not due to the severity of the statement, it was due to the fame and the exposure that uh, Kayakin was so famous that it spread and damaged the image of chess, while Shipov, well, they thought not that many got to, to know about uh, Shipov things, so he wasn't uh, sentenced. And that you can say uh, about these things that, um, well, are we actually going to ban cheaters for damaging the reputation of chess, and also people has to know it before it damages the reputation. Well, no one knows about it, so it doesn't really damage the reputation like that, I would say. Now, we can't do it randomly, no, like make I, up I, rules in, in retrospect. Also, we need some guidelines that we need to well, figure also, out. Well, also, I mean, doesn't, I mean, there must also be a limit to how many years you can go back. I mean, in criminal law, people, things expire after a certain number of years, I've been told. And, uh, wow, Peter's, Peter's law, law, law knowledge keeps... Yeah. Keeps catching up. Let, let's well, see. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not too sure. I found the extract, by the way. So okay. okay. So I will read it out from the article of uh, Vice.com. Uh, Druggy gave other specifics about behavior of the child that he found to be suspect. 
motherboard is not including that information because it could be potentially uh, uh, identifiable. So, I mean, like, okay, I don't know how... How does that say it's Neiman? Like, I mean, for uh, me, it's obvious because uh, it's random kids in US. I mean, like, how, how could you, could you uh, identify uh, anyone from there? Group of students of Lugi, like random kids, you have to sort of protect, okay, I don't know, on, minors. On. It doesn't say Neiman to me at all, <laughs> no. like, really. Not at all. I mean, for me, it's pretty clear. But yeah, okay, I understand. Okay. No? It's, uh, it's not for you, yeah? I'm not good. No, not for me. No, neither. I really, I didn't, I didn't even make it. Uh, it was a time where, where uh, Hans was a student of his school, so, I mean. But it also says 1500 till 1900, no? So that's really, when Hans was 1900, that's when, like 10 years ago? <laughs> no, that was like, probably not 10. Like, uh, uh -huh. yeah. No, I, my instincts was the same as Jan. I didn't read it like that, but again, uh, yeah. I mean, but it. Also, there is so much uh, information and rumors floating around. I guess now we also have to talk about some statistics videos. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, right. yeah from but I think it's so important that we have to notice that. Yeah. Um, Inspector Fresinet has turned from the defense to the No, not all. No, I mean, I mean like, I'm just... Uh, why they would do that? I mean, why they would create this, this commission? I mean, they have to, to do something. I mean, this is... Uh, I, I don't know. We'll they see. Have to, they, have to, they, ha they have to act, is my impression. Yeah, but I... Mean, I it's also reasonable. I mean, it's a, well, Peter's reputation is also somewhat at stake, right? I mean, they have to do something about cheating in, in chess and pretend that they do something. I, I, I wouldn't think it's insane to, to ban uh, people who admitted uh, cheating online uh, for, from over the board chess. But that sets a precedent. No one should ever, ever admit it, obviously. And then I'm not sure if that makes but things better. Can you, can you do it retrospectively? I mean, is there any clauses that give you the right to do that? Also, play online play sites, they have terms and commissions that say they can ban you whenever they feel like. <laughs> and that does not mean that FIDE can ex exclude you from tournaments. So I would think it's a much trickier topic, but of course we're not. Uh, I, that I honestly don't see happening. But uh, again, well, okay. Laurent, so this, this FIDE commission, Peter, like <clears throat> thoughts on the commission, the members, did you look into it? I looked at it and I saw there was some debate about the ELO ratings uh, that got a bit of out of hand online. And, uh, well, people were critical that, uh, well, they thought it was unreasonable to criticize them for being, well, lower rated, not in terms of the general population, but towards, uh, let's say, expert chess level, right? And um, But we're going the other way, no? We're also criticizing, like, uh, grandmasters that they're not high enough rated to have well, exactly. I mean, uh, so in, in that sense, it's clear, of course, that the FIDE Commission, I think their ratings was, I forgot, uh, maybe 2200, maybe 1900 and one unrated player. Or am I getting My boy, more? Klaus Deventer, didn't have a FIDE rating, it seems like. Yeah, I, I, I know him and it's a guy I have a lot of uh, respect for, but I mean, it's not What's like... What's your Klaus Deventer connection? What built that respect? Uh... I think he said hi to me in a nice way, as far as I really thought. That, that is <laughs> yeah, that, not, that not, Peter not remembers, me. you know. No, <laughs> <laughs> no it was that guy. You can laugh <laughs> about it. But I have been to a FIDE Congress in Chennai, and people not looking at me like I was a complete idiot was already, you know, a minority. So <laughs> I, it doesn't take much to, to impress. The number of 16? I can guarantee. <laughs> Something like this, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I mean, I, it doesn't take much to, to, to get on my friendly side there. But I, it's actually, well, it shouldn't only be grandmasters. And yeah. again, I think grandmasters is the wrong distinction here. It should be people with world uh, elite uh, feeling of, of chess. Uh, there should be someone in that. Maybe they will consult experts, uh, as, they, as they say. But I mean, for me to do these kind of things is a very complicated uh, but just to make clear what we're talking about, yeah. when you say world elite feeling of chess, do you qualify and does Laurent also qualify? Or does one of you qualify? That's my question. I would say neither. Wow. But that I come closer than difference. Laurent because I work for <laughs> Anand and, and uh, Magnus and I spoke to them uh, sort of uh, a lot. But I mean, let's see. Let, let's find out who played the most games. Against the world elite, by the yeah, way. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. I think I'm qualified. I'm qualified for that. Uh, so mm -hmm. I mean, but I'm borderline. I agree. 
But uh, mm-hmm. because I, I used to play them, okay, I'm not playing them, but I worked for for Magnus. So I, I think you, you, I mean, all of us kind of kind mm-hmm. of qualifies, but of course we are, we are kind of bo- very borderline. But I think, but we are mainly doing it due to being coaches. I mean, if we're talking sort of under in levels of understanding chess, both in a general sense and in a competitive sense. There is many layers between us and uh, Magnus level and, and below that. And uh, I I mean, for me, it's difficult to tell the difference between a 27 player and a 2850 player. And I think, well, to, to have that feeling, I mean, it is important to have someone who's been there. 2850 compare- players are Norwegian. <laughs> I, 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 I get your point. Uh, anyway, no, I'm not being able to follow. I mean, unlike my feeder criticism, this one is more difficult for me to formulate, I would say. Uh, I don't know. In 2012, my, my it would point. have been easy for me to do that job. <laughs> no, maybe yeah. maybe not anymore. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I, I, I think... No, yeah, I think... The, the same... Who is experts on uh, the statistical part? Well, maybe Ken Reagan, but he's also being critical of himself, saying I'm only an amateur, I'm doing focus other places and, and, and that like that. So, um, it's a very difficult task actually putting together... Uh, a committee doing it. And, uh, there was some criticism of that, but I think wherever you would have taken it would be criticism. But uh, at least, um, well, we seem to think that there lacks some uh, elite chess player perspective. Yeah, for sure. I was thinking maybe your boy Maxime would be good. He's uh, he's elite and he has some background in math and gambling yeah. and nerdy stuff. I'm not sure he works with chess engines. Like, <laughs> <laughs> No, I think uh, I think he could be close. Yeah, no, Maxim. Uh, yeah, yeah, Maxim could do a great job. Yeah, that's so. I mean, he has he has the feeling. Yeah, he knows. He knows. I mean, this is some guy who is sitting there for for now ten years, uh, ten years in a row with a uh, world elite. So he knows. Uh, he knows uh, what it is. I mean, like yeah, what is possible, what is not possible. FIDE has a, a lot of people they could recruit from. I mean, the uh, vice president, Mr. Arnold, uh, knew, I forgot what his title is, but he's called Nigel Short. And there is many you could... Uh, director of chess development. I, sorry. Right, yes, director exactly. of chess development. Okay. Yeah, you're prepared, I can see. Uh, there, are, there is many people who actually could uh, contribute with such knowledge. But, I, I mean, no offense to, to Nigel. I'm sure you will have some... Right, give is Nigel chance. qualified when it comes to the world of, like new remote engines and statistics no. and so on? I honestly don't know. Probably not. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't no. know. But I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a much smaller group of people, like mm-hmm. even world-class yeah. players and so on. I you understand. don't know how much they're into. The it's, it's, uh, it's complicated. There's no doubt. It's, I mean, exactly on this subject, it's much easier just to be critical than actually to create something that works. Speaking of create something, you, you guys saw this video of this Brazilian guy on, on YouTube that had this thesis that Hans's graph looks very different from mm-hmm. other prodigies in terms of this centipawn loss and especially standard deviation, which could you make sense of it? I tried, but I, I had conflicting thoughts as usual. Yeah, me too. I mean, like, uh, but uh, once again, uh, what I notice that every time some, some guy is, uh, is doing some, some statistics about uh, Niemann, I mean, it's hard to... It's hard to fully believe in it, but it's clear that uh, Niemann has completely different numbers than the top players. So, I mean, there is uh, two options. I mean, there is something uh, fishy about him, or he's a complete uh, weirdo. He, and, um, yeah, very unstable guy. Or both. And sometimes, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just um, very confusing to me. So, uh, I don't know how to... But this is, of course, this is not an evidence, but... Yeah, um, there's something about him, that's for sure. It, it's no, I got very confused, sorry, go ahead. It struck me as interesting, but also, again, well, when I talk about others not being expert in chess, it's clear that I don't feel fully qualified to understand the things fully. I mean, they can convince me of everything. I'm not able to be uh, critical enough on it. I mean, I'll have to spend more time and uh, to understand all the terms, to understand all the numbers. I mean, of course, they make it look fishy with the way they, they explain it like that, no doubt. But of course, also, I mean, I remember maybe three years ago, someone was sharing it more as a joke, but who plays most like a comp- computer. And uh, number one was Norwegian, but it wasn't Magnus, it was Hammer. And of course, we thought that was funny. 
But um, again, I, I don't know what to exactly extrapolate from these kind of numbers. I mean, it looks very suspicious. Of course, you could also argue that, well, some place in a non computer style to put more pressure on the opponent. I mean, you can create any kind of a narrative. But generally speaking, yes. I mean, well, this seemed very interesting, but again, it's... Um, I'm not able to fully understand it, so I mean, I can talk about it on a sort of uh, conversational basis, but not uh, in a very serious but way. I think it was, uh, yeah, so it, it was mainly Hammer because he is taking just he's taking all the material. Yeah, we we uh, we used to mock him for that. That when is a pawn, when is, what, what, when the pawn is hanging, I mean, it's not hanging for very long in general. So, <laughs> yeah, please, Jan. No, I understand. No, I have similar thoughts. I was trying to figure out this centipawn loss because one of the points was, I think, that he has a higher centipawn loss, which I guess means the number of pawns you lose on average compared to the engine you check with, I guess he was Stockfish 15, than other priorities at the level. But then I was trying to figure out what that means. If he has higher centipawn loss but the same rating, is that supposed? the thesis supposed to be it's like smart cheating and on average he's worse, but then he does it in like special moments? But wouldn't that protect him from this centipawn loss in these special moments where it's super important to have the biggest swings? So you can interpret the numbers in different ways. Mainly, I understand it on a Homer Simpson level. Hmm. Other kids graph from top to bottom. Hans' graph from left to right looks different. Yeah. See difference. But like now it feels like it's with conspiracy theories or COVID or any topic nowadays that whatever you want to believe in, yeah. you can find a video that supports yeah. your, your case. No, I mean... Like, yeah, again, the problem is we, we are not capable of sort of credibly reproducing the, the main points in a very clear way, and that's um, not good, right? I mean, uh, well, we're supposed to be experts on it, and uh, yeah. No, it's interesting, but uh, I'm not able to tell the difference between being, uh, you know, finding the gun in the living room or just some kind of weak uh, sort of uh, explanation. So I'm sorry for the listeners, but uh, I don't it's know strange. what to say. It's yeah. strange. I also thought this is a bit unrelated, but of course now everybody's looking through all of Hans's interviews. I was sent a clip where he said his favorite character was a fictional character from a Netflix show. I think Black yeah. Chris, I haven't seen that show, but who was an expert at manipulating people and luring them into his his web. I'm paraphrasing here, but <laughs> it was it was funny in this context. Yeah. 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 The problem is that he, he didn't he didn't talk. I mean, he didn't uh, publish any statement. I think he's kind of uh, screwed because it's pretty obvious that Chess.com asked something, and that in this very touching speech interview slash interview he gave in in San Luis, he was he was just lying about his online cheating. So even if he, he if he did nothing uh, over the board, uh, I mean, like. What can you say? I mean, I was lying on that uh, online cheating, but I was not lying on my over the board cheating. I mean, it's kind of screwed now. Uh, I mean, to make a public statement. And by the way, I have a question for you. But every week you're saying uh, Hans. Yeah, but now, now, now. I mean, like I thought about it, and now we get accused. I mean, now he's completely screwed. I mean, just because he lied for some part in this interview, in this very touching interview, where he tried to. I mean, it's clear that he lied on this online cheating. And by the way, I have a question. Maybe for you, Jan, because you are you are always very well informed uh, on this chess.com. So uh, future statement, uh, what do you expect? Because they say they, they are making a world championship uh, match prep. So you are you are exp- <laughs> so, so they do nothing for a couple. Of years. <laughs> they start clicking. So play today. Before yeah, the play the Spanish. <laughs> Go ahead. This very solid opening. Yeah, just play tight. So you're a better player. <laughs> so, 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 what I do you expect? Like, you expect in... some, okay. some, some numbers, some statistics about everyone uh, online and over the board, on only about hands. Uh, online and over the board. I mean, like, I, I, I'm really confused because if they publish, like. Some stuff about everyone uh, online and over the world that would be like, and like point out this this that guy is very uh, suspicious. I mean, I mean that, that would be just insane, no? I assume they will do it in an anonymized matter if they do anything like this to explain. Well, I think also the joke that um, Lorang is referring to should be explained a bit more thoroughly. I mean, I think uh, the main owner of uh, of uh, what is it called uh, Chess.com or maybe yeah. former owner. I'm not sure. But was making this statement uh, online where he said that, well, I'm sorry, this takes uh, some time, but you should understand this is like a 
World Championship uh, preparation material. And I think uh, well, we're very happy to be the benchmark of serious work, work in the chess world. At least, uh, well, I am. I don't know if I think it's a very good comparison. But uh, anyway, sorry for twitching. Yeah, no. Yeah. I, no, no. It's rarely I get an indirect praise in the chess so, world. Yeah, so we should see a lot of uh, new ideas. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know what, what the... What the what we should expect from that, but um, I don't know what you guys think. I mean, like, uh, it, it will be both, both, I guess, yeah, both, not only online, I guess. Well, they're clearly hyping it up, and also from Danny Rancher's statements, I don't think you need to be a master between the lines reader to see what direction he's leaning. So I'm very, I'm very, very curious what. What's gonna What's gonna come out? Also, how they handle these like ethical questions, which cheaters are in the public interest and which ones aren't, and so on. There's a lot of yeah, very blurry lines to walk. So I'm very curious what's gonna happen. But we haven't had the announcement yet, at least at the time of recording. Probably they do it on like Wednesday morning. And they're, they're, they're already published. I mean, like they are, as the very least, they leaked these uh, emails from Druggy. So I mean. It seems as they can they so can I mean, they can leak a lot of uh, emails and uh, confession and I don't know so that's that would be weird uh, if they do that but yeah okay. It sounds strikes me as very unlikely. I mean I don't know. Um, Let's move on. We yeah. have nothing new on the Neiman case, but we're following it as curiously as anybody else. It's so confusing, so confusing. Guys, so. Confusing. What's happening in the chess world? Magnus played a draw yesterday. A bit hap- I mean, I will just say that Danish radio has gone to extremes um, to test how you can cheat. They actually invited uh, Jonas Biara in the studio to play a, a game against uh, the news host. And, um, well, Jonas just thought they were playing a, a normal game. While what they actually did, what that um, the news host... Uh, was getting signals from uh, a co-host in the studio who was uh, having the sort of um, the, a computer on his phone, but at the same time he was sending uh, Bluetooth uh, signals to, literally speaking, um, the other journalist playing against Jonas Bjar's penis. So they were signaling him like that. And uh, the other journalist was playing against Jonas Bjar's penis. <laughs> no, he was playing against him, but he had something on his penis that. Uh, a code journalist could get to vibrate, and basically the number of vibrations should tell away to tell the, the num- which square the piece was on. Like That's one of these standard Bluetooth cock rings that. Uh, come in, yeah. That could be, uh, but um, well, they were doing like that, and uh, well, Jonas Bjerg said after the game he didn't suspect anything, but that his opponent was playing quite well. But Jonas Bjerg won, and they said, well. What went wrong was the, the communication actually not broke down, but he misinterpreted too many moves. So apparently, you know, well, it's like eight beeps for H, and then, I mean, it's a lot to keep track of. And, uh, well, this guy was not able to cheat in the proper way, but they actually ran the experiment. Well, sorry for so, that. But, uh, so Jonas Biara thought, ah, okay, this is one of these many standard media requests where I get uh, invited to Danish radio to play against one of the hosts in the, in the height of the cheating <laughs> scandal. And the guy behaves a bit strangely, but plays very well. We just play a friendly game, yeah? Like, that is Danish Grandmasters for you, yes. We, well, I mean, I come guess, on, Mr. Bjarre. I, I, I didn't suspect Fella either. That's, uh, I mean, yeah. If you want to do a scam, then Max seems to be the best. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. 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 It's good to know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, okay. you were actually yeah. changing the subject. No, no, but that's useful information. Uh, Thank you. So, European Club Cup started. There's some chess going on. Magnus is playing on an all Norwegian team, the, the Offer Spill team. There's, no, yeah. there's a Hansen. So, ah, okay. Uh, Hansen, Hansen replaced yeah. Hammer basically in the <laughs> the Olympic national uh, Norwegian team. So yeah, um, yeah. Let's see. I mean, yesterday. I mean, uh, at the time of recording, we are Tuesday before his game against Nauman and not uh, uh, Alexander Nauman, uh, German grandmaster. And not Niemann, uh, obviously. And yesterday he made the draw as black against this, uh, against a solid, I think, uh, Laftian Grandmaster. But that guy's yeah. a good player, no? There's Meskowski. Like, yeah. He played in a solid game. 
Yeah, yeah he was even he was even uh, slightly worse, I think, uh, at some point. Ah, plus one. Set yeah, the it was. Yeah, but it didn't look like plus one. But uh, yeah, it, it was worse. So sorry, Peter. I'm looking, and my eyes are the eye test. And uh, yeah, okay. So this is like three point five rating points, which feels a bit unfair, obviously, because he's black against a good player. But yeah, that's how it is when you are twenty eight, fifty plus. You don't think it's a problem for him that he lost his last game to Niemann and now he plays Naumann? That's, uh, <laughs> that's not right. No, but you remember last week uh, I was making a bit of fun that the uh, results seems to have improved when we didn't have uh, sort of uh, contact with Fress. But uh, after yesterday, I haven't heard from Magnus. So today he's going, he's maybe testing out how it works if he doesn't contact <laughs> me either. So we will see. I mean, <laughs> oh, no. it's, uh, it's really. <laughs> <clears throat> making the circle smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, I don't know. Um, but I think yeah. it's cool. I like the idea that he just plays there to hang out with his friends and play for his local team that probably is not going to win it, but what's the big deal? I mean, that is... I have some he just does it for social reasons. Yeah, I'm assuming he's not getting... Well, I don't know how the financials work, but I'm assuming probably it's not. his own, own club, so maybe he, he pays himself, or I don't know how stuff works. But would be That would be my hunch that he just uh, thinks that this is... Uh, and a good way to spend uh, time in my life, so I'm going to do that. I, I mean, yeah. And yeah, I don't think he has won any trophies uh, with them, and uh, well, probably would mean much more to for him to win with them than to win for any kind of other team that uh, would be favourites. So he's he's just very good. dedicated. I mean, I'm very impressed. Yeah, first, I mean, like already during the Olympiad, he played in this. Uh, all uh, B, you know, like there was two, two, two hall. I mean, I didn't even know where I was. I mean, I still don't know where I was uh, the, the second uh, hall. I mean, I didn't go there. I simply had nothing to do to do there. So he, he, even even when when I was even uh, elitism and chess. Yeah, sorry, but even when yeah. they played there, he went there and played. Sometimes he's playing is. He's playing for his Norwegian team the Sunday morning against 2300. I mean, that's all. I mean, that happened a few times. I mean, can, can you? It's what Lawrence Trent was telling me yesterday because I'm doing commentaries with um, Lawrence and Peter. I mean, could you imagine Kasparov showing up in uh, in Moscow when he was world champion and play for his team against a 2300 guy in a, in a hoodie? Uh, I mean, no. like, <laughs> that's just simply impossible. No, but still. I mean, again, we had this talk earlier about comparing chess players with normal people. I mean, you are setting like the peak of dedication is to be awake at 10 o'clock on a Sunday. And to go there, I mean, for what champion? I mean, for what champion to go there? I mean, name another what champion who did that? I mean, he's the only one, simply. Oh, I don't know the, what, what Alaska was doing, but, uh, uh, <laughs> but, but I mean, like, okay. from the recent, I mean, like, can you imagine Vichy? Uh, Going to his local club uh, for free and play at ten o'clock. Uh, some uh, some 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 random guy twenty hundred. Probably not. Indeed. Yeah, I understand. Well, now you almost sound like Kasparov, who said that. Well, you know, the, the world champion has to protect the integrity of the title and such. Maybe it doesn't sound like very world champion. But I like it. I mean, I like, I he, he like, wants to do like it, it, so he do, he does it, and uh, well, yeah. uh, that's that's nice. Mm -hmm. That's also his way to be involved in yeah. the community, you know, especially yeah. in Norway with the stuff like which I mean, often you want from our celebrities. So I think, yeah. I mean, he has the right to also be Magnus, the, not to be only the world. Yeah, champion. and so, and also, easy. I mean, he's playing this game yesterday, which he could easily uh, skip. I mean, I guess it's not a good deal to play 25-50 as black. I mean, some solid guy uh, no. will play Catalan. I mean, okay, uh, how to, <laughs> how to, I mean, like. No, but that's also, I mean, if you try to do as well as you can with the team, and I think that was the same at the Olympiad, well, then you play the matches when the team needs you. And then your rating is your rating, and you will yeah, have to Yeah, but the team didn't right? uh, need him to, to win that match. I can guarantee no, I understand. So, I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, but there is actually a difference. I mean, winning with a very high score in the, this European Cup actually gives you a huge uh, advantage, no. as far as I remember, in terms of tie breaks. No, no, tie pairings is a change the, the system. So, so okay. it's only tie breaks. Also, who are we kidding? These offer spill guys, they're not going to win. Yeah, no. No, but they could, could get medals, right? Maybe. Yeah. There's a super bad team with, with yeah. Vichy. Like, mm -hmm. That's... That's a new big chess sponsor, yeah? The guy from 
super bad uh, involved with the Grand Chess Tour with Romanian Chess. I think Rapport switched there. And yeah, they look they look strong. Vichy on board one. Sokolov as the coach. Yeah. <laughs> Olympic they, Olympic gold medalist. They, ha they have it all. They, yeah. they click all the boxes. There is yep. as well a uh, two very serious French team. Uh, Anya and Christine number, seeded number three and number five. So, yeah, no, I, let's say that the first five, six teams they can they can win the competition uh, as usual. Maybe maybe a bit more, maybe seven, eight teams who, who may win who are amongst the favorite, and it will it will be played like around round four, five, six. I mean, like let let's see how it goes. But many many strong players, and uh, well, very interesting to to watch actually. Laurent Fresnay doing yeah. commentary. I, I didn't know we were. I mean, like you can check on Chess Twenty Four, or you can check uh, as well. We are official, which I was surprised about. Uh, so yeah, with Peter Peter's Villa, we talk about chess, and Laurent's Pant is doing the the <laughs> the talking. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the small talk, let's say. Uh, now it's nice. It's nice. Sounds amazing. What else is happening in chess? There is the U.S. Championships is starting with with our boy Hans, Wesley, Fabi, all the guys. No, uh, probably Sam? not Hikaru. Sam, yeah, yeah. That's Hikaru the, the tournament I want to yes. see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard there is a now. Um, it's not anymore a fifteen minutes delay. It's a thirty minutes delay. I just uh, learned about that a few minutes ago actually. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, okay, even more restriction. Um, it seems that people, even if uh, it will be a strange atmosphere, because uh, Kawana was very supportive at the start of Niman. He started, you know, uh, on his podcast, uh, he started to be uh, much, much less supportive about Niman. Uh, so yeah, let's see. It will be a very, very strange atmosphere. Well, it's my guess. But thirty minutes delay is, is quite something. Why do they think that the extra fifteen minutes is crucial? Maybe. They for some reason they do. But, yeah. Maybe they think that you could wait it out in crucial moments if you had assistance. I don't know, but it's a big sacrifice to make. Yeah. For, uh, for the online audience, of course. Yeah, uh, somehow I don't see it as sustainable as a spectator sport to have it like this. Also with, well, with half an hour. I mean, well, either you have to lock up the players and the uh, spectators uh, afterwards so they don't give away the result online else basically well you will have this thing that the, the game finishes and someone will spoil it for everybody else it's uh, i understand the, the idea of the rule i just have difficulty seeing it functioning very yeah well, actually, uh, actually in the, the first round of this european club cup they have this 15 minutes delay and uh, uh, when we were checking some game and uh, at some point, it just all the moves came in one go because the game was over. So they sent uh, all the moves, which was very weird. So we missed like the, the last seven, eight moves uh, of the game. I, I guess they will, they will repair it and uh, we'll get... Uh, because it's just so weird because you are just taking some uh, some position. You think good win chances. Ah, okay. Uh, he just won, actually, uh, <laughs> because it's f it f finished like 15 minutes ago. So they shouldn't do that, obviously. Um but I mean, it's not, it's not such a massive problem, I would say. We'll we'll see. But yeah, for live broadcast, it's it's of course strange. Um, if I was Hans though, and there was like a super critical moment in one of my games, <laughs> I would for sure spend thirty minutes and yeah. three seconds on my on my move just to to irritate people. That that Oops. would make sense indeed. Hmm. But it's gonna be interesting how he will do that, and also well. I mean, it's going to be the first time after St. Louis with this kind of uh, public exposure. I would so, assume, and right? Chess.com will release probably a statement during it, yeah? So that will make it even the... <laughs> I mean, yeah. some part of the statement. Maybe they will make a first part, you know, first episode, and then yeah. to, to be to be continued, yeah? So, I mean, that would be... No, that would be a weird tournament. Um, it's my guess, because uh, Niman will have to give some interview after the game. And, okay... Uh, and what what can he say? I mean, uh, I don't know. Uh, we will see. Yeah, but uh, of course that's going to be a big big event. There's no doubt. Can't wait. <laughs> then let's slowly transition to Peter Corner. Speaking oh, really? of big event, there's a rapid tournament in Russia which features Kayakin, Kramnik, 
Paco Vallejo. Um, Sadvani Rajabov. I think those were the other foreigners. What's going on there, Peter? Well, I mean, Kayakin's ban is over. They're having a big tournament in Moscow. I think even it uh, collided date-wise with um, the referendums and annexations of the, the four Ukrainian provinces. And, um, well, it's hard to, I mean, not have to talk about. Is it acceptable to have uh, tournaments in Moscow at the moment? Is it t- acceptable to have... Uh, strong foreign players going there to participate in what's at least can be seen as part of propaganda things. We know who is uh, running the uh, sort of uh, Russian Chess Federation. If you don't know it, I'm very happy to repeat it once again, but it's people like Peskov and Shoigu, right? So, I mean, it's a weird situation that we have, uh, uh, I mean, players playing uh, top-level tournaments in Moscow at the moment is my impression. Or that's my opinion, sorry. Was the tournament already played? I only saw the announcement. Yeah, yeah, it's finished. I forgot. Right, so uh, I forgot who wa- uh, won it. So I will. Anyway, that was also the point of the tournament. I mean, who cares about the winner? Yeah, I mean, they just wanted I mean, to to show Kayakin is uh, that his ban is over. Simply, I think. No, you see pictures of no, Kayakin so Kramnik going playing, playing the event. Uh, like, no, but yeah, Kay- Kramnik. Did, I like, mean, Kramnik didn't it. make any statement since uh, the start. Uh, of the war, which was uh, very disappointing. I mean, he only made a statement about uh, Pioja lack of uh, talent uh, while being his former uh, uh, trainer, uh, which was uh, <laughs> really, <laughs> really very. Um, um, I don't. I don't know how. How I mean, how to say? You should come back to Twitter. <laughs> yeah. I miss Kramnik's Twitter. That, very very that was, elegant, uh, let's even say. for my standards, a, a, a wild uh, time. Yeah, no, I mean, like, Kamnik yeah, is not, not, yeah, uh, yeah, I used to to work for him, but now yeah. I'm, I'm also a bit curious. Yeah, no, I lost his, I mean, like, I'm not, yeah, the way he's doing things recently, it's, uh, to put it mildly, it's slightly weird to me, but yeah. <laughs> but also, if we talk about Kayakin, I don't know what to do. I mean, he was given a half year ban. But what do you do afterwards? Either you say he served his ban, and that is. But if he sort of, uh, he keeps tweeting. I mean, he was, I forgot, but maybe he said that this was the best day of his life or something like that. I, I'm uh, just quoting what someone told me. He, he tweeted, I haven't checked it. But, well, do you just uh, ban him once again? Or how does it work? What about the things he banned? He tweeted while he was uh, on the ban. I mean, I don't know also how to, what de- to deal with it juridically. Hmm. Yeah. Me neither, like. I doubt he will get many invitations to non mm-hmm. non Russia based tournaments, but of course it gets gets interesting if he joins I don't know, World Cup or any of yeah, there will be a lot of events, events where so. he has a sort of the right to and play. And he will, right? so we'll that's see. for sure. That would be, I mean, that would be like yeah, just to be annoying. I mean, like at the very least, I mean, even if he has zero motivation, he will play it. I mean, guarantee. Um, yeah. I don't know. From a chess perspective, well, I didn't uh, care much about the tournament. As you said, the chess part was not the relevant part. I'm a bit curious how how the, I should ask him actually, how the invitation for, for Paco went. Like he gets, wherever he is in the world, he gets asked, do you want to play a rapid tournament in, in Moscow? And he says, yeah, sounds like a great idea. Like uh, I'm on my way. I'm very curious to, to hear his thoughts. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> How that works if they tried a lot or just uh, thought he will do it i don't know yeah me neither what else is happening in the world there's okay this i'm not sure if it's even chess anymore elon musk had this this one tweet solution to uh, on how to to end the war where many people in my opinion rightfully took offense with and kasparov Kasparov disagreed uh, with him publicly. Like, do we talk about such stuff, Peter? You, I'm sure you're all over this as well. No, I, I follow it, of course. I mean, but it's it's much more politics than chess. I mean, there's basically no chess angle except for that uh, Kasparov is, is, is the is the is the goat, and that uh, Elon Musk recently uh, also got involved in in chess with uh, well uh, uh, another tweet. But uh, well, we can. But uh, I mean. Well, Kasparov is obviously more uh, a political 
influencer these days and, and, uh, and we can see from so his games yeah, as well ma- mainly mainly connected to that. yeah it's true i mean he had a rather un- well no maybe wouldn't say unfortunate but unsuccessful uh, Chess How result, did he do in the played. 960? I didn't even follow. It didn't go well. Yeah, like, he made the think, door. Uh, and he, 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 he also made it with Switzerland the last round? He made the door with his oh. boy uh, slash friend. Uh, Switzerland. I mean, it was a played game, but it... Also his... Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Or? I mean, it was clear from the game that Peter was playing very, very... Uh, the nice way, you know, not to... to it didn't want, because it was around 8 or 9. I mean, it was like... The, was, was it was on nine. nine. It was the last okay. chance to score something for Kasparov. That would have been mm-hmm. really. I, I I didn't think. I don't think that Peter wanted uh, Kasparov to end up on zero out of nine. So, um, yeah, yeah. while he played his game, of course, in a normal mm-hmm. way, but yeah, he was he was happy that uh, to have to have something quiet, uh, which is very understandable. I mean, it's mainly impressive that Kasparov plays this event. Recently, he's done quite well, but I can imagine that. Well, a like like everybody else, he gets a, a year older each each year, logically. But it, it probably hurts him more. But also, I think for the other events, he had prepared uh, a lot. Well, this time now he's well even more asked for and sought after in the political world. So I can imagine that somehow he didn't uh, find time to prepare for it uh, properly or anything a- a- at all. I remember meeting Kasparov like in St. Louis maybe three years ago. Oh, maybe four years ago, before a tournament, he said, yeah, yeah, you know, but then, well, he was obviously looking very much forward to playing. I don't know if it's still the case, because he has, uh, well, rightfully, he has other things to care about right now that matters more to him, which is completely fair, and then somehow choosing to play anyway. Well, you can respect it, but of course, the result might suffer, like you saw this time. Also, I think people have unrealistic expectations, even if he scored, like, let's say, 50%, which would be amazing. The debate is always, yeah. He's he's the goat. If he comes back, like, could he still play with the world class players? I don't know. He's uh, how old he would be 60? sixty. I think uh, he's born in sixty three, right? Yeah, fifty nine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he's been out of uh, top chess for fifteen, sixteen years. Like, it's in a way, it's also disrespectful to the guys that are working on chess uh, every day and are, of course, like in the peak of their careers to think the guy can can come back yeah. after such a long break. I, no, it's not how it works. I mean, it's going to be random, but I'm going to mention Sutovsky now because I think he tweeted that Kasparov could actually be in top 10 or even top 5, if I remember correctly, if he was still taking the game seriously and then making a link to Korshnoi. I actually disagree with that. I don't think at uh, the age of 59, even with Kasparov's talent, you could still be in the uh, top 5 at this time. No one knows, but it's certainly yeah. not you after know. not playing chess yeah. for 15 years. No, had he played yeah. every day with the motivation yeah. he has, so who, who knows? Yeah, Vichy is doing, I mean, he's still, Perhaps. he's back, he's back in two top 10 at 50, uh, 53, I think we, we checked um, yesterday. And also doing some uh, things on the side, like uh, winning elections. Uh, against our dear friend uh, Peter Heiner, which I, I will correct you on Kasparov doing well in the last events. He did very poorly last year in this uh, blitz uh, in Croatia. Actually, I think he had one day with mm-hmm. half point out of nine, and the next day was one or one and a yeah, half yeah, yeah, right. out of nine. Yeah. So, I mean, it's already a couple of years that he's doing uh, uh, very poorly. It's true that he had few years, few good years in, in St. Louis, but uh, yeah, of course getting more and more difficult. But Vichy is amazing, actually. I mean, it's still 27-15, not playing much, but still, when he's playing in Rapid, or um, Blitz is a bit tough for him uh, now, but when he's playing Rapid or Classical, he's still showing that he's a 27-50 player. Uh, he almost won yeah. Norway Chess, no? He came very close, to and mm, he blundered against Mohamed Yorov, but no. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, mm-hmm. they, they, I don't know how it will... Uh, but I mean, also, but Vichy is considerably younger, right? I mean, no. Well, I mean, like fifty-three. Yeah, but that, that's six I mean, years, six, yeah. six year difference. It, it is still yeah. quite something. Yeah. I mean, uh, so I'm co- I'm I mean, consider- uh, considerably younger than you, Peter. Thank yes. You. <laughs> <laughs> but we are both over the hill, so that's the same kind of thing. <laughs> but yes, I mean, okay. Yeah. A- a- anyway. Um, so, Gary and Elon, we did. Are we going to do the junior power rankings? 
Did anything happen? Any junior action? I didn't see a lot of junior ranking. Uh, Actually, junior yesterday action. they, they played the first round. So in the European Club Cup, they are all play. I mean, like all the Indian boys are, are playing. Gukesh is playing. Uh, Eric Gazi is playing, and Sarin is uh, playing. And the funny part is that they were all, uh, especially Eric Gazi, uh, who was kind of lost at some point. Sarin was much worse at some point. They were all uh, having difficulties, but at the end, they just um, won their game against 2,300 or 2,400 players, uh, which was logical. So it will be interesting to uh, to watch uh, them, but... Uh, yeah, no, nothing much uh, happened except from that. Yeah, it was a slow, slow chess week in terms of action on the board. Of course, the, the Neiman case keeps us busy, and red chess um, is very much still on the case. But other than that, not that much went down as far as I could see. They're playing this what's called global chess challenge, where I think it's uh, the the third round, and then people move on to, to an over-the-board final. Yeah, yeah. Nakamura mm-hmm. qualified. Bobby gets kicked out, something like So that. not much happened, so this means that we have plenty of time for, for the for the Fides <laughs> with Peter. Look at Peter. He's, he's shining already. Yeah. He's smiling. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, look, look at him. No. Okay. Ah, we, should, we should give the... Um, uh, okay, Peter, go ahead. So... No, but I mean, well, again, there has been so many faces uh, in that thing for the for the last week, so we have to take it in small bits, right? But I assume we start uh, going to start yeah. with Smirin? Or, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah, that was that. It feels long ago, you see. Yeah, yeah actually, it was say. But yeah. I think that's... Yeah. No, that feeder um, sacked uh, commentator Ilya Smirin from the Women's Grand Prix for what they... They find us uh, sexist remarks. Uh, there was some video clip going viral and a lot of criticism. Then first, um, Peter Director General or General Director Emil Sotovsky made a statement saying that uh, he would apologize on air the next day. But uh, then that was criticized. And then Peter came with a statement that it was uh, unacceptable and that he will not be brought back on air. And then they put up uh, a French Grandmaster instead. Um, so I think... Uh, but, um, well, basically, well, I don't know if we are going to talk about his uh, statements and what happened. Or, well, Please, you tell go. me. Just, uh, well, no, I forgot what the exact uh, context was, but I think, um, well, Smirin made s- several remarks, but one of them was, uh, I think, well, apparently they had some kind of debate off the record and they somehow ended up on the record as well was we hearing more talking about uh, no but the, the video started well, like uh, 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 uh that's uh, fiona uh, it was fiona who was commentating fiona still anthony uh was commentating she asked if it was possible to make grandmaster norm like uh grandmaster ah, yeah, yeah. and and smear like was wondering why uh she would uh if she was a woman grandmaster and she said yes, and he was wondering why, uh, why, why she needs uh, to to become a, a man uh, grandmaster. So that was that was a start, and then yeah, exactly. Uh, privately he said that okay. Um. About tournaments, and then well, it seemed to get a bit out of hand. I think also there was some remarks. Goyashkina about, uh, playing like a man uh, sis, sis. because she was strong in yeah, the exactly. game, and uh, she was playing. I mean, like positional, positional, positional. and strong. Exactly. In, position, and, position no, but he did, he did, yeah. he did a master class. I mean, like, and then he mentioned Soviet Union. I mean, like, okay, that was just one minute of of really. I mean, like, so, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, and I think also well, there was the. Both the opinion and perhaps the the, the tone yeah. was uh, heavily criticized, and it led to to, to that he was uh, cancelled like that, right? Um, and no matter where you stand on the topic, if there should be separate women's tournaments or not, I was annoyed by the first of all by the tone, and also you're commentating a women's Grand Prix. Like, do you really think this is um, the time to bring up the very witty point? Why? Why can men not play in women's tournament and women can play in men's tournaments? Like, where, where of the topic? But he, he felt so smart when that thought crossed his mind. In, yeah, exactly. In the he, of he, women's yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. that in a way like you're really asking. if you if you think oh. uh, men and women sh- sh- shouldn't play separately then you don't go to this uh, tournament i mean simply you just uh, decline the, the job offer to 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 go and commentate there i mean uh, th- that was just uh, uh, very yeah, first place but i agree with jan that uh, well the tone and then the place was, was wrong I mean, well, I have publicly many times stated that I think, in, in general, uh, there is something wrong with having uh, tournaments for 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 females when we all have open tournaments, and that's how it should be. But uh, I mean, well, this was neither the place nor the way to to have a, a principled debate like that. And I very much agree with the tone being wrong. So I'm not supporting or. Yeah, no, especially in, if you mix in, it in, with in, statements in, like she played yeah. like a man. Of course, in of course. Yeah, but well, again, the Soviet Union, like there was yeah. a lot of, yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> a lot of begging for a shit story. I think that it actually does make sense to debate uh, some things in, in, in terms of, of playing styles. If you can detect things like, for instance, top female players might have more trading resources than uh, other players at the same rating level. And can you detect that? There is legitimate uh, discussions to have, but. This was not a, a legitimate discussion or in a legitimate way. So I, I, I very much support uh, what they, what they did, despite uh, having some overlap of opinions at times. Yeah, no, I agree with you for for a change that uh, Sutovsky first statement was pretty weak because uh, he said that uh, Smirin will apologize, and he was he was not. I mean, it's it's what he thinks. I mean, uh, let's let's be clear. I mean, it's what he thinks. He later yeah. had an interview where he said... Yeah, he it was, was maybe yeah, not the right was, place and maybe not that. the right thing. But yeah, basically it's what uh, he really believes in. So he was not sorry at all. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, let's uh, let's face it. So, but then it got a bit out of hand next, of course, with, with Mind Waldman. As to, I think the next day or the day after, um, they released uh, the two new uh, feed employees, uh, uh, Mr. Yashvili, but also Nigel Short is the new. I think Jan knows the actual. Uh, title. Is he director of chess development or probably something, something like, like chess development like that? And uh, well, as usual, I can make the, the my usual complaint that if you are getting such positions, perhaps you should um, have people applying for them instead of uh, trying to give them on a non-transparent basis. But maybe people are getting tired of that. But um, I think. Um, well, I was making the point that, okay, you just had uh, these things about sexism and now you, you hire Nigel Short. And, um, well, he's famous for having some statement that caused uh, a lot of uh, attention. I don't know how many years back, but uh, quite some, some years back, based on first an article in Noon Chess, but then it became to the public knowledge and uh, there was a huge uh, debate on, on, on that. But... Um, when things got a bit out of hand, was sort of Sutovsky defended him, and I said, "Well, sure, but we are talking here about statements. What about actual behavior?" And that, of course, becomes uh, more personal. And then uh, some people, uh, very specifically Greg Shahade, came forward with some stories. And uh, well, then uh, Sutovsky and Fida just completely shut up, so it got close there. But many was very critical of uh, Sutovsky actually somehow not showing trust in what Shahade said. Uh, Greg Shahade said not acting upon it, and um, especially me, has been sort of harassing Sutovsky online for, um, you know, well, can you actually respond to these kind of things? When people put forward serious accusations, then it's Fida's role, uh, and especially in people in leading roles, to take action upon that, not just to hide it under the carpet. And uh, ah, well, When you said, uh, especially me, has been harassing <laughs> Sutovsky online for, I was expecting many years. To be <laughs> no, no, that is uh, <laughs> not true. But I think that, uh, I think it's, uh, I mean, well, when people like Shahad, uh, Greg Shahad, I mean, the mention I say Greg Shahad is also, well, he has a very famous sister, so it makes sense to, to specify which one, comes with uh, very concrete things when others sort of chime in. If, at least in my opinion, it would be nice if Fido says, yeah, we are taking these things into consideration. We will have a look at it. Uh, and Sutovsky, on the other hand, was basically bashing the source instead of actually promising to take care of it. So um, that, uh, I think, is, uh, is not good. But, uh, well, I have been critical before. And I'm probably I missed that whole debate. It's on Twitter? Yeah, or? yeah it's on Twitter. <laughs> I mean... Uh, no, I saw, I I mean, saw, men, men, I saw no, parts no. of it, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, I, I don't think Sutovsky is very much into the, the, the topic, actually. I mean, like, he doesn't... You know, he was trying to make things... I mean, with Smirin, it was very clear, yeah? His first instinct is, like, 
uh, let, let's make things, you know, yeah. better. I mean, like, uh, okay, probably calls me and say, okay, you should apologize now and everything will be all right. And then he saws it. This storm on Twitter, actually, I mean, like, I saw the power of Twitter. That was amazing. I mean, like, sometimes it's, I hate Twitter for that, but sometimes it's kind of, I mean, like, uh, it's a bit scary, actually, that Twitter can just suck uh, anyone in, like, one hour. You have this video, I mean. But that's also a bit of a problem, that Fide was actually trying not to do something, and when it happens on yeah. Twitter, suddenly they changed their so on, on one. I mean, it's not, not how it ideally should be. No, I'm with the cause on this case, but of course yeah. it's also, as Laura says, it's tricky because usually it's like a one-minute video where out of like many hours of, of commentary and then people react to it and as consequences, like I think this video was, was pretty clear and I'm with it. But I was covering it on my stream, for example, where I was mainly saying, yeah, no matter where you stand on the topic, like this is such, yeah, such an awkward and... Uh, weird way to to time it and the chat got incredibly incredibly toxic because it breaks up into into camps very very quickly that's why it's it's so hard to talk about the topic although i think everybody also in my chat agreed that what smirian did was unfortunate it's yeah it's very very became very very toxic quickly and i'm assuming it's similar for other streamers i saw people uh, were covering uh... it so it became a big thing quickly Mm -hmm. It's an unpleasant subject, and that's why also I was saying that, well, I mean, no, I'm with the thing with Sean. I mean, feeders should be more open about it, and, uh, well, when someone complains or mentions things, yeah. they should take it seriously in, in a more active way, not um, just sort of try to hide it away. I mean, that's why we have uh, people paid and people who have responsibilities, and they should act upon it. But, uh, well, that's my No, opinion. but, I mean, the first thing should be to believe uh, people who are... Uh, yeah, uh, complaining or talking about it because uh, no, it's true that in chess it's been. I mean, uh, not not a lot of talk about uh, sexism in chess. It does exist, like it exists in real life uh, in other sports, uh, but uh, we should uh, we should definitely address it. Uh, well, in chess there has been basically zero talk about yeah. Me Too and things like that, and well, we have obviously a lot of generally males who has the power in the chess world and uh, well i think it's a subject that should be taken more serious but uh, well i have many suggestions for how things should be in the chess world i think perhaps especially this one uh, lacks attention but there is okay silence. so what's next peter <laughs> what's next on your list yeah <laughs> Well, then we, I forgot, did I, Dvorkovic in Georgia, I covered the, the last week, right? He was visiting president there, but uh, I mean, he's doing, uh, pres I mean, Dvorkovic was in, I think, uh, Kazakhstan and now in um, in uh, Azerbaijan. And I think yeah. my general point is that normally presidents doesn't really have time to just uh, have uh, someone from a chess federation coming and, and talking to them, but both Kazakhstan and uh, and Azerbaijan obviously saw it uh, differently. Uh, I have made these insinuations that, um, well, perhaps they also want to talk about other things than, than chess, because both countries are in, well, Azerbaijan is in hostilities with uh, Armenia at the moment, you could say the direct acts of, of war. And uh, in Kazakhstan, uh, I think they have, um, well, also a lot of, uh, I, I mean, things with, with Russia at the moment, perhaps more people uh, fleeing there. And, such and, um, but anyway that's just my my usual insinuation that uh, like with Kiesan especially also Dvorkovic is having both a political agenda uh, along with the, the chess agenda but uh, that's obviously only speculations uh, I would say uh, and um, well again if we keep the the Russia angle within FIDE the wild card was uh, nominated for the 960 world championship and uh, FIDE nominated uh, Jan Nepomniachtchi. And uh, from a chess perspective, I think it's very logical. Uh, they are, um, he was number number three in the last uh, 960 World Championship. Uh, number one and two, Magnus and Wesley So is, is playing. So to give to the wildcard to the next guy in line is, is rather logical. You could make a case maybe for um, that uh, Ding is higher rated, but uh, well... Um, Nepomni actually won the candidates. I mean, there's a lot of good points for there. Where it becomes more difficult for me is that the tournament is happening on Iceland. The Icelandic government uh, 
is uh, very much supporting that Russian athletes shouldn't compete. Uh, so is the Icelandic uh, Sports Federation. And, uh, well, this creates some awkwardness in, in, in that direction. And that, uh, like uh, Filata was saying for the Russian Chess Federation, you could say the same here, that it becomes a, a testing ground for, you know, challenging the sanctions of having actual Russian athletes compete in, in countries that think it's wrong. But, um, well, my usual point of view. <laughs> this is a, yeah, little, little to add. Like uh, I think I agree with you generally, but uh, yeah, other than that, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's uh, yeah, keep us posted. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, can, week, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will, I will, and promise. Well, then we have to feed a committee on on the Magnus Neiman case, but I think we we call. Yeah, it I'm, I'm confused so, about. I mean, and, like uh, survey special. I mean, like I understand Nepo is is Russian and. Um, yeah, and yeah. okay, uh, why? I mean, he's doing well on the board, so yeah. you get this wild oh, card. I mean, it's not, the, the, yeah, I mean, it's, I have mixed feelings about it, to, to, be, to be very honest with you. Yeah. The, also, the FIDE appointed two new directors. I mentioned Nigel Short and uh, I mentioned Sexism, but of course, the, the other angle is also that, uh, well, I think two months ago, Nigel posted that uh, either you will be seeing a lot of me or you'll be hearing a lot of me. It's hard not to sort of. Um, to take that as a threat that either I'm going to reveal stuff or you're going to give me a job where I can travel along the around the world like uh, I very much enjoy. And the second uh, uh, who got a job was Yashvili from uh, Georgia. Uh, I only have positive things to say, but again, uh, That's very long. well, Georgia, no, jo I'm talking about Georgia. The, the Chess Federation was very much under criticism for supporting Dvorkovic because, well, Dvorkovic was literally speaking in the, in the, government when uh, Russia attacked Georgia in 2008. And there was this recent uh, TV interview. So, I mean, the Georgian Chess Federation, to quite an extent, is going against what uh, Georgia, the country, is, is uh, sort of standing for. And, and uh, well, you can argue that uh, you can make the, the case for that they are awarded with a, a, a powerful job within FIDE for that. So that's my, in a, in a calm, calm voice, I'm trying to come with all my insinuations uh, like this. Many insinuations. Yeah, I, I didn't hear yeah, about this guy Yashvili before. I mean, like, before I read his name no, on Twitter from no, no, from your Twitter, Peter. So, I mean, like... No, so I the play, my Twitter yeah, it, it, it sounds very Georgian so. to me, uh, his name, but, yeah, I mean, that's all I could say. I mean, uh, no. <laughs> wow, that, that is just wrong, anyways. It should be, I don't know. Uh, but, I mean, no, I mean, well, I spoken to him. I think he's one of the candidates. We emailed a bit before the elections. I uh, was trying to get him to to support uh, the Barish Polis tickets um, unsuccessfully. In a, in a What's Barish Polis up to? That's what uh, I want to know. Is he still yeah, chess? Is he, is think, he back uh, to PricewaterhouseCoopers? Uh, what's he up to? I think like, uh, like one should do. You run a campaign, you fail, and then you just chill afterwards. Uh, this was also my initial plan. You chilled failed. for two days, no? But... Uh, and then we had to just uh, a new podcast. Yeah, somehow. No, you I had mean, to fly yeah. back from Chennai. Some, exactly. I had to fly back from Chennai. I had COVID. That was reasonable ways, reasonable explanations. But uh, I haven't been much in touch with him. I think uh, oh, we have a group chat at some point. He actually did, did post some feeder stuff there. But uh, no, he seems to. Who's in the group chat? A, sorry? Who's in the group chat? You should Who's include in your, your, yeah. your. Don't be many. Us. Hey, please <laughs> include us. So, a lot of I yeah. was in there. Come on. No, but that's a bit of a pity in the sense that, well, like you, I mean, well, okay, we've known each other for much longer, but there was this, uh, let's say, our online headquarters, uh, like six guys, who was in touch a lot, and now we don't have any reason to talk to each other. And it's a bit uh, start a podcast. What's wrong with we could have, this what? week? <laughs> yeah, that is true. Peter Hanni Nielsen featuring Andre. So that's Andrew. why I understand yeah. now why uh, Peter is spamming us with uh, messages <laughs> for, for some months oh, right. right now. Yeah. So he, yeah. I was replying in there. Yeah, the it's, 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 yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> okay, I get it. No, I mean, unlike you guys who looks uh, weirdly at me, these was guys who think, okay, this this guy has courage and that's a good <laughs> meme and stuff like this. I mean, no, no, that was uh, that was my group, but. Uh, no, but you have to understand that for us, it's a much thinner balance to still mock you while you're bringing up all these valid points. Like uh, these other guys, they don't know you like like we do, so they can't. No, no, mock maybe you. they even respect me as a chess player. All these yeah. things. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get your point. It's a, it's a very kind audience, and I and I miss them, no doubt about that. But I think Andrew is good, uh, as what I can see from from Facebook. But it's like, well, 
we spent a lot of time together. Now there is no particular need to sort of bother each other recently. But I'm I hope I'll speak with him again at some point. We had a, a great time together. We were not uh, in numeric sense extremely successful. Although I mean, when you see some of let's say the presidents that Volkovic is visiting. I mean, they won with even higher percentage when they had elections. So, I mean, it depends on the perspective, how badly we did. You see, I managed to take in a bit of criticism. There. <laughs> anyway, maybe yeah, that was my yeah. time. Let's, I don't know. Do we do the chickens of the week? I didn't think about it, actually. Yeah. So, <laughs> my, I have well, my joker, you know. Like, you can but, to you. You can no, but Sutovsky is a good candidate, actually. I, I, that's, that's mine. That's yours, I mean, okay. Well, I would take Sutovsky. Sutovsky, Laurent takes Kiri. Very exciting. Like, why Where's do Gay? Where's Gay? He didn't show up for the... Ah, he lost in the online. Uh, yeah, he didn't qualify. And now he's, he has no team for the Club Cup. He chickened out from yeah, Euro Club Cup? Yeah, I guess Cup. so. A good, good one. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it's true. He lost. He didn't qualify for the 960. But... Uh, no, on a serious note, I will, uh, well, of course, announce Sutovsky, but also the, generally the whole FIDE Council that, um, I mean, well, if you employ Nigel Short, then you should, I mean, the day after you sack someone from sexism, well, you should explain something. You could have a good point, but then you should communicate it and stand by it, not just... Uh, well, I, have, I can communicate for them. It was habit. planned for a long time ago. And they just uh, did. Yeah, I mean, they just had the wrong that, timing. I that, think it was a reaction to. Yeah, that was very stupid from them. Sorry? I mean, just they didn't think about it. And uh... yeah, no, I mean, well, I mean, that's uh, that's how good leadership is exercised. That you you can take decisions, but then you also have good uh, sort of uh, answers to to relevant questions. I think uh, Short actually made uh, made a joke about it. Like he's not. Uh, he unblocked me actually on on Twitter, and uh, I could see that he made he made some joke like he's not the most uh, sexist grandmaster anymore. So like something like that, yeah. The very next day, uh, Smyr yeah, got sacked. But... Okay, uh, that he lost his title or something like that. Is it... uh... It's a good joke, but yeah. it's, uh, it's not a good answer. <laughs> so. so we have the classic situation here: yeah, Laurent pick. <laughs> Peter picks Peter. I don't. I don't have a nominee, um, <laughs> mainly because I'm chickening out from one. But I also haven't seen any chicken. No, I, 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 no, I have no. I, mm -hmm. I, okay, Adish, we are we are good for this week. Uh, I will. I will nominate uh, Jan uh, because you, you you don't want to tell us where you are. Seen. Like it's a big secret or or something. I mean, okay. Well, I, I heard you seen. have a training camp, <laughs> which is probably. Uh, I don't know if it's true or not. But wh wh when does it start? This Thailand Open. Starts um, in like two weeks or less. Or I'm I'm going. I have complicated travel yeah. plans, but I can tell you I'm flying Barcelona Bangkok on the 16th. On the 16th. So come on, you you cannot sell this as a as a, you you have to do something. Yeah, or, or I mean like you are walking somewhere. Mm -hmm. I I don't know what you are doing, but you, you are you are doing something. It's clear. Because you can't say to a family, okay, I'm leaving. I'm just <laughs> getting there. Uh, you know. How do you know my, my family is not with yeah, me? Yeah, uh, I mean, ah, okay. Ah, they're going to school, yeah? <laughs> no, no. Jesus, Detective Laurent is on me. Hans, do something. It's school time it's in, in Germany, okay. come on. So, please. But it's more. Laurent is genuinely, genuinely curious where you are. <laughs> yeah, so you are a chicken. So you are, you are, you are my chicken, Jan. You're not in Barcelona, come on. I don't, I don't Fair know enough. that. You, and Jan takes Giri or we have a... <laughs> no, a, I, I can't. Sorry. I don't have anybody, which I guess makes me the chicken as well, so it's the usual. We used to and say where we are. I mean, this sure. is amazing. I mean, just this new... <laughs> no, I mean, like, that? it's weird. I mean, I will also <laughs> yeah. make some small secret, you know, like... Well, I, I don't want to say where I am because it's so... <laughs> that she's... I agree, it's weird, but it's also... Very, not yeah, no... Big reveal. Big but reveal actually, it makes week. it interesting yeah, yeah. that he doesn't want to, my to, travel to tell it. Shall we, shall we keep it on the podcast yeah. for another yeah. hour? Okay. I'm not telling you. No. <laughs> so you have no chicken, yeah? Okay. Laurent, you have to... Hmm. No, I have no chicken. I have no tails. Maybe quickly, what, what's, can you see it on his coffee cup what the brand it is? Starbucks, uh, which is very, very Starbucks. international. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's a clue. <laughs> Ah, oh, then it's not Russia. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. okay. I, I'm not in Russia. That much I'm willing to reveal. Okay. Fair enough. This was this week's Chicken Chess Club episode. Thank you so much for listening. We might be back next week. Or with a special episode whenever Chess.com makes yeah. their, their, big, their big announcement. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.